Hey guys, uh, this is Bomic and welcome to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, today we're gonna talk about the ISO 27002. So last video we talked about the ISO 27001. So just to be in, you know, a little more continuation, I wanted to give you a quick introduction. What is 27002? So now, uh, you know, uh, we know uh, 27002 is again managed and developed by the ISO. Uh, so they pretty much manage, you know, uh, a whole lot of framework, but 2700 series is entirely focused on the information security. Now, uh, 27002 is also called as an annexure A. And, you know, uh, the reason is um, in the 27001, uh, we, we discuss about the ISMS. So in uh, 27001 formally defines the mandatory requirements for information security management system. So, you know, it, it last time as we talked about like class 4 to 9, it defines various requirements. Now, it uses 27002 to indicate suitable information security controls within the ISMS. So, as we talked last time, you have a risk you do risk assessment as you are as per your planning in the 27001 and based on the outcome of the risk assessment you define what controls you need to implement to minimize the risk so for example if you have a high risk of somebody could get in in your office and you do not have any any physical security then you could choose out of like you know 114 controls which are available in 27002 so you could choose physical security controls implement them and minimize your risk so uh, that's why like you know it, it, it doesn't formally define whether you have to whether implement all the controls or not or whether you have to stick with the 27002 but in practice uh, you know I have seen like most organizations organization that adopt 27001 also adopt 27002 now uh, you know uh, you could treat the risk by you know choosing probably HIPAA control so like if you are a health organization you could also choose controls from SOC you can also choose controls from uh, PCI so oh, there, there are several other frameworks like you know GDPR so there are several other frameworks which define the control list and also is so flexible that you could pretty much choose controls from any other standard and, and like you know get certified now the thing here is uh, 27002 is like you know purely a guidelines per se like you know it's merely code of practice or guidelines rather than certification standard so a organization cannot get certified against 27002 they have to stick with like you know 27001 and then choose the controls or take the reference from 27002 to implement and complete their isms now uh, next thing I would like to talk about like you know as we discussed it's also called annexure A but now it's mostly like you know well known for as like statement of applicability so for example uh, if you are aware of with the 27001 in the risk assessment you define the list of controls that uh, you have implemented as an organization and those list of controls are call a statement of applicability so these are the controls which are applicable for your environment now as you can see on the screen here uh, we so like you know 27002 uh, all the controls are defined in 18 different sections uh, from 0 to 4 is purely like you know uh, just a standard description but the actual control is start from section 5 until 18 uh, total number of controls are 114 so you don't have to implement all the controls uh, it depends on like you know what's your uh, environment is so for example let's say you are a legal firm and you do not do any software developments then entire section 14 uh, right here could be like you know out of scope then for example if you are a, a company with all the remote employees and you do not have any you know office per se then pretty much entire 11 section could be out of scope like you know you could define in your statement of applicability that these controls are not applicable to us so same way like you know cryptography if you're not doing any cryptography then you could just put it out of scope now there are certain sections which are very hard to put out of scope like you know might make it un, uh, not applicable but we'll discuss that in the future videos uh, here I just want to give you some introduction on each of the sections so let's start with the five 
so uh, information security policies so this defines what security policies you need as a company in order to you know uh, run the SMS effectively and, and your IT security policies and how often do you review it uh, number six is organization of information security so here you will define roles and responsibilities and the people who are going to be you know uh, probably inform if there is anything uh, wrong going on like if there, there is an incident happen like how you do you manage security in the project how would you do like you know mobile security if you are a teleworking people a company that like you know how you are managing security for the teleworkers and, and things like that uh, seven is human resource security so as it sounds like you know this is all about the HR security this includes like onboarding how you are making sure onboarding uh, process is secure then during the employment like you know employees are getting security on a training uh, then of, of course like in last when the exit inter like termination so you know during the exit that's the most critical like how we are terminating the access per se and like you know getting the assets back and things like that so that's all about the HR uh, eight uh, asset management so here the, we talk about like you know how you are managing the inventory so here it's not about just the IT inventory because that's a misconception all like most of the people have but here we are talking about the information inventory so uh, software hardware physical logical all sort of like you know asset inventory so just think of it and like you know what asset as a company you own and like you invent like manage the inventory of everything you probably you know specify who is the owner of the inventory who is going to manage the inventory how you're going to classify the inventory like you know there is a confidential like some assets are very confidential if it's a holds a client data uh, some are like public like your public website and things like that so you would classify that and then also how would you manage that those assets like you know if you have destructed how you uh, dispose it like securely and things like that uh, next one access control uh, this is uh, like you know as it sounds how you are going to manage the access control so you could define access control policy then you could define how the employees are going to get like you know accounts upon onboarding and of course how you are terminating the their access upon termination how you are managing the access of the admin users how you are making like you know doing regular reviews of the uh, access uh, of the user access and then Lastly, here it also talks about like you know password requirements and then access control to the source code. So if you are a software development uh, company, then you know organization, then you are. It also checks like how you are managing access to the source code because not everyone needs to have access to all the source code. Like a staging person does not need to have access to the production uh, source code. So that's pretty much it. Cryptography. It's a very small section. I guess it's two controls. So here it talks about like you know what are the encryption requirements you have uh, and then like you know how you are implementing encryption and then how you are doing the key management of the cryptography. Uh, 11 physical and environmental security uh, here as we uh, ta talked about like you know in the earlier example here uh, you want to see uh, your physical uh, site like you know your office or your data center or your multiple size settled offices everything like you know how the physical security controls are are, are managed so uh, entry doors have a badges or not then you know environmental so like you know whether you have fire extinguisher then uh, your uh, heating cooling HVAC and all those things and then also cabling security and you also want to make sure like if you are a tenant in the particular building that there's clear separation between your office and the and the you know other other company office and things like that so physical like you know uh, can anyone simply walk in and, and steal the data and that's pretty much it like you know how to avoid that so that's a uh, physical security uh, 12 uh, that's the operation security and as you can see it's the biggest uh, I guess portion of the entire uh, an extra day. So here we talk about various things. So we talk about the operating procedures. So like you know, as an IT person, like you have to document a lot of operating procedures. Then uh, change management. So if you are making changes to the environment, infrastructure, how you are managing the changes. Then your backups. So how you are regularly taking the backups, restoring the backups, testing the backups that th whether they are effective or not. Then antivirus, anti-malware. How you are manage like you know what softwares you have uh, are there like you know sufficient to catch any anti-malware thing things like that 
then uh, there's a there's a big portion on logging and monitoring so like you know whether you're logging critical events and critical user activities and then you're monitoring it so you know of course if you're logging it but not monitoring that's not effective so you got to do both uh, logging and monitoring then there is also a portion about the vulnerability management penetration testing so how you are managing uh, you know vulnerabilities in your network you have to do like you know regular periodic vulnerability management and things like that so it's a big section um <clears throat> next one is communication security uh, here uh, it's required about the network controls. So like, you know, your network diagram, uh, then uh, what are the controls you have within your network? So like, you know, firewalls, IDS, IPS, if you have outsourced the services, uh, the auditor would like to review the NDAs and like, you know, uh, agreements to them. Then also your electronic messaging, like nowadays people are not just reliant on the email. They are also using Slack and Skype and other communication services. So whether those are secure or not, if you are using that to transfer any confidential information. Uh, 14 is system acquisition, development and maintenance. This is purely for software, mostly for software de development. Not only development, but it's acquisition and maintenance. So if you are acquiring any software, you're making sure it's like, you know, you are following your best practices to acquire the software. Now for development, of course, you are doing like, you know, change control. You are managing secure environment to develop the code. Then you are, you also have like, you know, a different people in segregation. So one person cannot access the code or data in the other sex, like, you know, production and things like that. It also talks about the application security testing. So, you know, whether you're doing your due diligence and doing the security testing or not, and then lastly, it talks about the test data. So if testers are using staging and you know, they're using production data, test data, that's not good. And if you're using it, then you have to take some further steps to kind of control uh, the access. So that's what it is. Uh, 15 is supply relationships, or you can also call it as a vendor management. So here you want to make sure your third party, fourth party, or wh whoever is there, like, you know, you have also services are, they are controlled as well. So you have the uh, NDAs and, and agreements and uh, contracts and SOWs and everything in place with the vendors. Then you are regularly monitoring their services and you know you are making sure they are as much secure as uh, you know as per whatever the data they are handling. So if they are handling any public data, you might not want to you know uh, concern about various controls. But if they are handling client data then yes, yeah, you have to be very uh, proactive and like, you know, uh, check their security every, every now and then. 16, uh, security incident management. So here it's talk about like, you know, all things about the incident management. So like, who is uh, responsible? You, you need to define the management responsibility. You need to define what is your incident response team. Uh, who is gonna you know do what when the incident happens because when it happens you do not have much time to kind of react so once if the responsibilities are defined it's much smoother to uh, kind of navigate that throughout the process then you know if you have to collect the evidence like you know how you're gonna collect it how you gonna document the incident so all those things about the incident management it falls in the section uh, 16 17 is business continuity management so here first you need to do that like you know you need to conduct the business impact analysis so you need to identify various activities which could affect your business and based on like you know your most critical activities you will define the business continuity and disaster recovery plan for those activities at least you could go holistic like you know you could go and define for everything but at least you need to do for the most critical services so here you also want to define like you know, redundancies like uh, how your network and, and services are redundant. So if something goes down, how you can back it up or like, you know, within the given uh, ITO and RPO uh, recovery time objective and process uh, point of time. So if your SOW defines with your client that you would recover any service within four hours, then you should have a redundancy that you could recover everything in within four hours. And also you have to test your plan now and then because if you do not test it, you don't, you are not sure like whether it's work, it will work or not when the situation arises. So that's it. And then lastly is compliance. So here, this is sort of non techy but like here you want to identify like, you know, what all the compliance or uh, regulatory requirements you have. So if you are, uh, let's say, uh, doing business in uh, Europe and like, you know, uh, then you are might be affected with the GPR. If you are doing a lot of PCI 
uh, transaction then you are also like you know uh, applicable to the PCI requirement so here you need to uh, identify what are your compliance or legal requirements uh, of course like you know there are many companies uh, where the uh, clients also specifies like you know you need to do this 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 in order to have the like you know uh, to stay in contract so sometimes a client may require like instead of using eight character let's use 10 character password so that becomes your one of the requirements so you need to gather all this data and like you know probably consolidate somewhere so you can manage it and make sure you are complying those requirements so then again like you know there are several requirements like state wise uh, California has a different requirement than wa Washington so you also need to manage those and then uh, lastly uh, yeah, like you know you are doing your uh, due diligence and like somebody from the outside independent party is performing the audits every now and then and then you are acting on the results and things like that so that's the overview of the uh, 18 sections of the ISO 27002 uh, like you know uh, next time I would like to you know probably go in more details but uh, give me a comment and like you know uh, let me know uh, what you would like to see more like you know I can go on and on like for each of this section and give the examples and also give you tips on how to audit and things like that so leave me a comment what would you like to see and probably like you know and that way I'll, I'll move forward but if you if you love this uh, if you like this video please uh, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel so because we're gonna talk about a lot of different things we gotta talk about the compliance we'll talk about the uh, you know uh, penetration testing application network uh, I'll also give you tips on several other things so hit like share and subscribe and 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 please check out the description for my uh, you know favorite books on the information security uh, and also stay tuned with my Facebook page because I will be posting most of updates there